Good evening, I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. The jobs report of October 2nd, Friday, October 2nd, 2015. A general glum sigh from the markets and from Main Street because it indicates the jobs growth necessary for the recovery to strengthen into the rest of this year and into 16 is not there. Where the jobs go and why is a question I put to my colleague and co-host and friend Larry Kudlow, CNBC, who joins me now. And we're going to turn to the matter of jobs, but we begin with a really cool website that Larry's introduced me to tonight. Apparently all the insiders know this. I learn these things slowly. Larry says, go to the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta website and click on GDP Now. And it comes up with a number that, Larry, why is this number blinking red and pointing thumbs down to me? What's happened? Good evening to you, Larry. Good evening, John. Thank you, as always. You know, it, it, it is, the Atlanta Fed model is not perfect, but what they do is they take all the numbers that come out and they start calculating what GDP will be uh, when the, when the quarter is finished. Now, September 30th ends the quarter. We have most of the data, not all. There's um, stuff coming for September on retail sales and industrial production and housing. So that's, that all has to come. But it's, it's pretty good. It flashes very good directional signals. And it's telling us 1% to 2%, basically, in Q3. And that includes the jobs report. And I happen to think they are correct. And what it spells out is something we've discussed in, in recent weeks, and that is you had a good number in Q2, which was almost 4%, but it's not holding. There is not going to be a big second half, you know, 3 4% growth rate. It's not going to happen. The Fed has had to pull in its own estimates for the umpteenth time, and uh, that there's not going to be a massive Fed tightening either. I just want to get that in. The, it, this slows the Fed down, and the stock market's reaction to this number on Friday and Monday was very positive, extremely positive. Stocks are up almost 500 points uh, following this jobs number, and I think the market is saying to the Fed, good, we don't want higher rates right now. We know normalization is going to come, but not now. And I happen to agree with that view. As you know, I've been kind of a dove the last few months. I don't see it in the numbers. I don't see it in the commodity indexes. I see shrinking inflation expectations and things of that sort. So I think that's the real message of this. Uh, tepid economy, John, disappointing jobs numbers, and um, don't expect an aggressive Fed. Do not. We welcome Phil Izzo, the news editor of the Wall Street Journal. Uh, we only invite Phil when there's bad news, because then we get to blame him for the bad news. Phil, a very good evening to you. I read from the Wall Street Journal, the report you have, a, you aggregate economists to respond immediately to the jobs number, and it was so unhappy last Friday, I copied down some of my favorite responses. The one that I like sounds like Robin to Batman. Holy disappointing jobs report, Batman. Everybody was glum. Is that because of the surprise, Phil, that no one expected this low a number? Yeah, I think that's it. And it was also bad news across the board. One of, one of the comments from our economists that I thought was the best was, if you like silver linings, this was not the report for you. Because there was really very little good news in this report. Uh, there's a lot of job slowdowns in the manufacturing sector. The only place where there are jobs is, um, is in the service sector. There's uh, stagnant wage growth again. The headline number was disappointing. Uh, there were fewer people. The unemployment rate didn't go up, but that's not because there were more people employed. It's because there were fewer people, more people dropping out of the labor force. So all around, there was just not a lot of good news in this jobs report. And I think what happened is everything Larry said obviously was correct. And I think what happened was people were waiting for this jobs report to tell them what they already know that things slowed down in the most recent quarter, and this jobs report basically cemented that, and I think, as Larry said, makes it clear that at least the Fed's not going to do anything this month. I think they might still do something before the end of the year, depending on what happens, but they're definitely not doing anything this month, and I think that's one of the reasons why markets are up. You know, Phil, just a couple of uh, high points that are really low points. Um, the prior months in July and August were revised down significantly, almost 60,000. And most people thought at least August would be revised up, which it has been for 
the last five or six years. So that didn't happen. That's a bad sign. I, I'm a guy who tracks revisions, and I think that's a very bad sign. The other thing you touched on, people dropping out of the labor force, you lost 350,000 people. The household survey of small businesses lost 236,000 jobs. And um, so the so-called participation rate, the labor force participation rate, went down. Uh, so I guess it's back to 1977. Those are just kind of ominous signals. And let me add one more. The work week fell. The work week fell. Our friend from Hoover, Stanford, Ed Lazier, always talks about how important the work week is. And, and that thing fell. And that thing has really slowed. The work week is something that's inside, Larry. My memory is that when the work week slows or the wages uh, do not rise or they retreat, that means there's no demand in labor. Is that what it means, Larry? Um, what you do is you multiply uh, wages, average hourly earnings, times av- uh, hours worked, and you come up with a proxy for uh, wage income. Okay. Now, that's not collapsing. I just want to note that. Uh, it is, however, slowing. Uh, with gasoline prices coming down, it's not so bad because there's uh, basically zero inflation. But, yes, um, all that is a disappointment. One other thing I forgot to mention, uh, private payrolls, uh, 100,000 in August and 118,000 in September. Those are bad numbers. I mean, we have been running in private payrolls um, almost 220,000 on average. So this is like a halving. Now, I know it's only a couple months, but it's not a good trend. Phil, a detail here. Is there a... Can we blame somebody? I don't mean you. I mean, can we blame an event? Can we say the strengthening dollar, the weakening Chinese weather? No, that's not possible. I'm looking for an excuse, Phil, so that we can revisit this in a month. Well, there's definitely no weather this time. Uh, I think that... I think you hit it on the head with China is a big worry. Um, and the stronger dollar is kind of a part of that. I think the rest of the world isn't looking so hot right now, and China especially is a big worry. I mean, we've, we do a, a survey of economists, and one of the biggest problems with China is it's a black box over there. I mean, they, they report their numbers, and nobody really trusts what comes out of there. So every time there's even a hint of slowing, they think it could be, even, um, it could be so much worse than this, and we just don't trust the Chinese government to tell us the truth, that we don't really know how bad it is. And I think that's creating a real problem of uncertainty in the global markets because they're counting on China for demand and if China isn't there then who are they going to sell some of this stuff to yeah I really agree with that um, and you know Phil it, 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 I don't think anybody believes China GDP anymore but when you get some of these uh, I'm going to call them more easily countable numbers like industrial production or car sales or electricity production right you can actually you know, count that stuff, it really looks bad. I mean, they're all negative year on year. So there's a lot of skepticism. Um, the trade numbers today, uh, I'm sure you saw them, but, you know, exports have really been slumping. Not imports. Imports are fine. Our consumer sectors, you know, not bad. Exports are slumping, and it's, it's worldwide. I was just looking at this. Every single, look at the United Kingdom, Europe, the pack rim, Canada, Mexico, South America, and OPEC countries, we are registering significant negative exports, significant declines in exports to the whole world. What does that tell you? World recession. And that's, that's because of weak demand, Larry. It's not yep. us, right? It's, yep. it's, they don't want to buy our goods at any price. You can't sell them if they don't want to buy them. That's exactly right. And you're going to see, you know, that creates a negative impact. That's, that's, your, that's your earnings, Larry, for the S&P 500. That means that revision might have to come again. Remember when they downgraded the earnings on the year? And yep. with this kind of softening, I'm remembering what you've taught me, that earnings are the mother's milk, et cetera. Yeah, look, um, you know, it's still well known. You've had now three consecutive year-on-year declines in S&P operating earnings, which, Phil, I think is a pretty good number, operating earnings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you've had three straight declines, yep. Q4, Q1, and Q2. So since I do believe earnings or profits are the mother's milk of stocks and the lifeblood of the economy, I am concerned about this. If it goes on, 
for another quarter or two, um, I guess some people are going to start looking at the R word, recession, even though I don't really believe that. But you can't keep going with falling earnings. All right, Phil, here's a stat. I get into an elevator and it talks to me. This elevator said 10,000 layoffs at Delta because they're tightening their belt in order to maintain their profits. Isn't Delta a global uh, a, a surrogate for the uh, a surrogate for the global economy, and if they're cutting ten thousand good paying jobs, that means there's weakness everywhere, not just in the east of the United States. Yeah, we've seen a lot of these companies cutting jobs in the last couple of months. It, 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 it's interesting, though, as Larry says, it's, it comes back to the earnings and the global companies. But there's a lot of these companies that have struggles and that they have not been great, like Conagra just announced some job cuts, BlackBerry is doing job cuts, but these are continual problem companies that are sort of in this spot where the tide's going out and they're seeing that nobody has any clothes on. So that's the problem when the rest of the world is slowing down. Domestically, we still look pretty good. I mean, the things that are, that are U.S.-based economic issues, such as housing, car sales in the United States, uh, Consumer spending, as Larry mentioned, in the U.S., we look pretty good. The problem is the rest of the world is still struggling, and that's where a lot of our companies sell their products. Phil Izzo of the Wall Street Journal, Larry Kudlow, CNBC, and Kudlow Radio on the weekend. When we come back, I'll ask these gentlemen, is it possible to have a recession having never had a recovery? I'm John Batchelor.